So this will be a, a video telling you some of the resources I've gathered from the internet about the April 8th, 2024 eclipse. And I'm not going to go through all the links on these resources, but I'll get you started here. The starting point where these are gathered, easiest access will be gpclements.com, gpclements.com. And in the large font, we go to my astronomy branch of this website, and then another large font, resources for April 8th, 2024. First, a, a caution, big caution, protect your eyes. Only view the sun with approved solar filter glasses. If, if you're not in the area where the sun is totally eclipsed by the moon, uh, if you can't see stars, if you can't see planets in the sky, then it's too bright. You need to use approved solar filters. Don't just use sunglasses or some other homemade uh, device where you think you're blocking the sun. Our, our eyes uh, don't tell us pain on the retina. Uh, so if they're receiving uh, ultraviolet radiation or infrared radiation where your retina doesn't show that as bright, there's still energy going to your retina, so you must protect your eyes. And don't use a telescope or uh, binoculars unless you're a skilled amateur astronomer, professional astronomer, and have an approved solar filter for the telescope or binoculars. I'd suggest don't use a telescope to view this eclipse or binoculars. Uh, get some approved solar glasses or wait and view when it's in totality or punch a hole through a piece of paper and let the light go through that hole onto another piece of paper. Don't look through the hole that you've punched. Don't look at the sun directly, but look at the projection of the image of the sun on that uh, second piece of paper or the ground. Or get a kitchen colander that has multiple holes in it and let the sunlight go through those holes and project many images of the sun on the ground or on a on a piece of paper. Don't look at the sun directly without protection for your eye. So first, the NASA uh, website with resources uh, that's happening here. Um, and again, you can scroll down. I'm not gonna go through all these, but if you find a city where you want some information, you can click on that. It's an interactive uh, situation, a static map of the track of the, sun, of the moon's shadow across the United States. Um, I'm not going to go through that as well. A table of a few cities where the uh, eclipse is total gives you the uh, maximum uh, you know, at the center of totality uh, in central time. The eclipse uh, on the Earth is uh, starting in Mexico uh, where the moon's shadow comes across land and then up through Texas and up to the northeast United States. So. Uh, in the United States, it starts in the central time zone and then switches to the eastern time zone. Uh, for Cleveland, Ohio, they have uh, listed here. And then there is a, uh, a link here, too, for the 2024 total solar eclipse. Some more information as to what to expect and the safety warning. Uh, again, I'm going to let you view these resources as you, uh, as you want to. Um, but some good information here, how to prepare and the safety steps to uh, certainly uh, be cautious of. So um, get to the second page here. Uh, Sky and Telescope magazine has resources for the eclipse. And um, again, you can look at the different categories that they've, they've listed here. Um, give you a little preview of what it'll look like and the path of totality and Lots of background articles to help you prepare for what's coming up for the eclipse, some projects that you might want to do. You might want to make your own solar projection viewer. This is not something to look through at the sun, but something that would project an image on the piece of paper uh, would, be, uh, would be suitable. So take a look at those. Uh, Sky and Telescope magazine, Astronomy magazine, and Again, a map of where it's going to go across, um, some more background information, and they're going to have a link for a live video. There'll be, I'll put some links to where you could watch this eclipse on YouTube. I'll put that in the description of, the, uh, uh, of this particular video. There'll be links in there that you could access and 
prepared for uh, what you might use the internet for to look at the eclipse as it's happening. Uh, the Great American Eclipse website, um, again showing you what's going to happen. They have a nice little animation here. This is the moon's shadow. Uh, this is computer generated. And I'm going to advance it up here until we start going through Texas. Uh, just to show you what's going to happen. So we're crossing the border. Um, and coming up through various cities, just grazing San Antonio. If you live in San Antonio, you're going to go west to get a better view of the eclipse. And even in Dallas, you might want to go east a little bit. Uh, if you're living in Waxahachie, that's a good spot to view the uh, total solar eclipse. I'm going to speed up a little bit. Uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, coming up through uh, Illinois. And I'm skipping a lot of nice states, Indiana. And coming up here on the west side of Cleveland. Um, but the city of Cleveland will have a pretty good view. Uh, if you're in Toledo, you're going to have to go east. And then on up, and I'll let you uh, view that as you, uh, as you have opportunity for, for viewing that particular uh, graphic. Um, Scientific American has some interesting static graphics of uh, cities that's going to go by, and especially down here a little bit. Uh, traveling is going to be a problem. There's going to be a lot of traffic. And places where the population is high, the traffic could be more of a concern if uh, the eclipse path is on the edge of a city. And a lot of people are going out of the city to get to where the uh, eclipse is darker. And then on the right side here, uh, generally you have a better chance of a clear sky if you're south. If you're in, in Mexico or in, in Texas, as we move up towards the northeast United States, uh, the odds are it's going to be cloudy, and they have a little uh, indicator on the side there. Again, I'll let you look at that as you are uh, inclined. Scientific American, oh, that's the one we're just at. Sorry about that repeat. Timeanddate.com. Um, and they have some, again, interesting graphics showing the path of the eclipse and the oceans and across the United States. Um, a few locations where there'll be partial eclipses are listed here. So enough of that. And uh, interactive map of the eclipse. So this one is now live. Um, and you can zoom in, you can drag. I'm using my mouse here. So for example, in Carbondale, it's this blue line is the best place to be to view the eclipse. Outside of the red lines, it's a partial eclipse, and it's not that dramatic. It's still interesting, but it's not dramatic. If you're outside of these red lines, it's worth your time to drive towards this blue line. Um, you don't have to get all the way to the blue line. Uh, for example, if I click on uh, Cape Jardot here, and there's, then you can click on one of the uh, uh, the links here to get uh, information about that location, what's going to happen, and even they're going to have current weather forecasts for uh, uh, for this and their particular uh, uh, times here. So this is four minutes of totality, and I believe this would be the start of totality at 1.58 uh, p.m. Uh, Central Daylight Time. But I'll let you uh, view that as you're interested. Um, I'm going to go up here you know, towards Cleveland and uh, the town of Medina, Ohio, uh, Marion, Ohio. And again, there's information at all these sites. It's, Amazing what computers can uh, can be used for to create that information. It's very worth your while exploring that if you're near one of those towns. <clears throat> and another map here, this interactive map. And if you want to, you know, Chattanooga, what's going to be happening in Chattanooga? 88% of the sun's disk could be covered by the moon. Uh, so interesting but not dramatic at 2.04 uh, p.m. 
I think I've converted that correctly. Um, but uh, let's go back to uh, Omaha. And then Omaha is at 1.55 p.m. If you subtract five hours, Universal Time is Greenwich, England. Where five Central Time is five hours different, that brings it to 13.55. Then subtract 12 to get past noon. That'd be 1.55 would be the best time to view the partial eclipse. And again, only using uh, uh, protective approved solar filter glasses uh, to do that. And let's come on down. There's another one here I'm not going to go to. You can uh, get more information. Uh, if you happen to be in Ohio, um, they've created a website with the various counties and the the best eclipse path is going through where these tan counties are. So if I click on Huron, then Huron County has some events that are happening uh, April 5th through 8th and you know various uh, times. I'll let you explore that for the county that you might be uh, might be close to. Um, and I've got some other links in here and click on those as you're interested in uh, in viewing. If I go to Waxahachie, Texas, we've got uh, their website and activities going on April 6th through the 8th. Um, I'm going to come to another one here. Again, what will be happening in Waxahachie and their weather forecast you could look at. If I go up here and drag the mouse across this, uh, so you see what would happen. This is uh, the solar corona, the Swispy feature that's only visible on, on the total uh, uh, eclipse portion. And Waxahachie, 4 minutes 18 seconds of totality, which is pretty good, and occurring at uh, uh, 1.39 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So those are some resources. I hope uh, some of this is helpful for you. If you are in a region outside of, uh, of the total eclipse, you can get information about the eclipse. Again, I'll click on this link for Omaha. If you're you know, in Denver, Colorado, if I click on there with my mouse, uh, the moon will cover 65% of the disk of the sun. Uh, if you're in Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, 79 percent if you're in Davenport, Iowa. Uh, 89 percent of the solar disk will be covered by the moon. It's still, it'll still be interesting, but not as dramatic as being in the path. The, the problem of getting into the path is uh, traffic and availability of a place to view the eclipse. If you're planning on going into the path of totality, you need to be prepared. Take along water, take along first aid kit, uh, take along some food, make sure you have a full gas tank before you get into this area of totality, and expect a lot of traffic. Uh, be patient. I hope you are able to view the eclipse online, or live is better, but at least online. I hope you have good activities and take advantage of uh, some of these resources. Again, you can access them by going to gpclements.com and then follow the links uh, that you that you discover there. <coughs> so thanks for watching the video and uh, keep looking at the sky.